Hey everyone, welcome back to another Articulation Quick Tips video. In this video, I'll be giving some quick tips on how to target the R sound as well as R blends. One of the most important things to remember with this sound is that it is notoriously one of the trickiest sounds to target. The reason that it's so much harder than other sounds is because it is one of the least visual sounds. What I mean by that is the TH sound, for example, is very visual. You can see that your tongue is supposed to go in between your teeth like this. You can see it in a mirror. For the F sound, you can see in a mirror that you're supposed to bite on your lip. But for the R sound, er. It's a little less straightforward than the other two sounds I gave you examples of. So one of the biggest things to remember is don't look for perfection with these. A lot of encouragement is really helpful. So if you're practicing the R sound with your child at home and it doesn't quite sound perfect, that's okay. Just as long as we're practicing and thinking about some of the tips I'm going to give you, that's a win in my book. The first quick tip I like to give my students to make the R sound is to smile slightly. Now, the reason that we do this is because a lot of times my students' productions of R turns into a W sound. For example, if we take the word red, a lot of students might pronounce this as wed. Now, you can see that I just rounded my lips to make that W sound, wed. If we smile slightly, red. It doesn't let us round our lips and it forces us to curl our tongues back or to pull our tongues back. I always tell my students the R sound is a tongue sound, not a lips sound. Your lips shouldn't be moving as much for that red. So smiling slightly is my first quick tip. My second quick tip is to tell your child to pull their tongue back. I like to give this gesture a lot. Their tongue should be coming back in their mouth. If the tongue isn't coming back in their mouth and just staying at the floor of their mouth, it's going to sound like this, uh. So I always tell them to smile slightly and pull their tongue back, er. Uh to make sure that it doesn't turn into that uh sound. Some children might benefit from reminders to tense their jaws. I even kind of do this motion because this is kind of a tense sound and that's just further helping them not produce that uh. If they're tighten up their cheeks right here by their jaw, it should help get that sound. If your child can say the R's at the beginnings of words fairly well, something you might want to try is having them add the word read to the end of words that already end in R. That way they kind of connect their R that needs a little bit of work at the ends of words to an R at the beginning of the word that they already can say. So an example of what I mean is if we take the word letter and your child might be saying this as letta instead of letter. So you take that word, letter, that has an R at the end of the word, and you add read to the end of it. It would sound like this, letter read. And you kind of trick your tongue into doing that good R sound that your child can already do at the beginning of words. This trick only really works if your child already has R's at the beginning of words down. Now, obviously, you wouldn't just have them say read at the end of everything. This would just be isolated while you're practicing your speech. So just to recap, my quick tips are smiling slightly, pulling your tongue back, tensing your jaw, and if your child can say ours at the beginning of words, adding that read to the end of words that already end in R, such as star read. For our blends, you would use the same tips as I just described. Smile slightly, pull your tongue back, and tense your jaw. Now, the main difference is that I recommend breaking up this blend. Like the example I have listed, for the word crib, if your child is producing that R kind of like a W, quib, I would recommend breaking up that C sound, the K, and the R sound that follows it. So it kind of sounds like this, ka rib. That way your child can work on getting that good R sound separately from that K sound. And as your child gets better and better at saying these sounds separately, you can work on kind of closing that gap and going from K 
carib to crib and kind of stretching out that R sound. And there you have it, some quick tips for R and R blends. Just a reminder, this is one of the toughest sounds. So if your child is still having some difficulty with this, feel free to reach out for extra help. Thanks.